Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how to scrape the news table from Finviz for any stock. Specifically, it'll be this table, which includes the timestamps and the title of the news article. And also starting today, I'll be posting links in the description area where you can find this R script. So you can go check that out. So I'll start off by copying this link and then I'll move to my R script. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna require these two packages. I'll start off with ticker start off with zoom and then I'll have to build a function and I'll name it get fin news and I'll just pass in the ticker and I'll go ahead and add a system sleep for five seconds in case you want to run this for multiple tickers it'll kind of pause things out and spread the time between the calls so that you're IP address doesn't get blocked. So I'll go ahead and place the URL here by running paste zero. And then I'll delete the ticker. I'll add a comma. And then I'll pass in the ticker here. Alright, so now I'm just going to read in the data by running read HTML. I'll pass in the URL. And instead of looking for the table, I just ended up copying the X path. So I'll just use data, I'll use HTML nodes, I'll pass in the X path, which is forward slash, forward slash, asterisk, brackets, at ID, and then the table is called news table. I'll close the bracket. And this should be the X path where the news table is located at. And then finally, just use HTML table to get it in the right format. All right, so now I'm going to test this out to make sure this is working. Oh, it looks like I forgot to close the single quote. So I'll go ahead and run this. So I'll return the list. So now I'll use do call r bind data. We'll take a look at temp. So this will be our news table for Zoom. But the problem is that these timestamps are kind of messed up. And these are in descending order. So what I'll end up doing is I'm going to split the timestamps. And then I'll just fill in the dates by using NALOCF. So we'll go ahead and close this out. I'm going to save my date time vector here. And I'll do as data frame temp one for the first column. So like I said, I'll split the dates. All right, so to split the times, I'll use as data frame str split. I'll pass in my date time vector, which is the first column. And the pattern to split by will be an empty space. So I'll go ahead and run this line. And then I'll save the dates by converting them to as character. And the times will be as character, date time, second column. So if you take a look at this vector, it has both times and dates, and I want to get rid of the times. So what I'll do is I'm going to detect the times by using the semicolon. So it'll try and find the semicolon in this vector, and then I'm going to replace those with NA. So I'll do dates, str detect. So I'll pass in the dates, and the pattern will be a semicolon. And I'm going to replace those with NAs. All right, so as I mentioned, I'll use NALOCF. And this will fill in the rest of the dates. All right, so now that we have our dates and times, we'll combine those by running timestamp as data frame as POSIX CT. 
I'll paste the dates and the times and then the format will be percentage B which is the three letter month percentage D for day lowercase y for the year and it'll be a space percentage capital I for the hour and I'm not using H because this time vector has an AM and PM so I'll do percentage M and then percentage P so I'll go ahead and run this line all right so now that we have our timestamps now I need to combine that with our news vector and I'll go ahead and do that by replacing the first column in temp with our new timestamp and then if you're going to be running this for multiple tickers I'll go ahead and place a third column with the ticker name and then quick formatting for column names of temp so the first column will be dates and then the news and then finally the ticker and after that is done just return temp so let's take a look at temp so now we have a nice data frame of timestamps our news and the ticker and it's kind of truncated here but it doesn't actually truncate the data so you'll have the full article name all right so I'll go ahead and delete everything in my global environment. I'll minimize this function. And then I'll run this function with a different ticker to make sure it's working. So we'll take a look at that data frame. And it looks like everything returned correctly. All right, guys, so that was a quick overview on how to scrape the news from Finviz. So I'll start collecting this data and then I'll try and see if we can do some sentiment analysis on certain tickers. All right. Well, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate your support and I'll see you guys in the next video.